Hello, I'm Commissioner of Agriculture Steve Troxler. We're going to have another in a series of the videos that I'm doing to talk about what the different divisions of the Department of Agriculture do. And today I'm in the Meat and Poultry Inspection Office to talk about the, the hard work that we put in to ensure a safe food supply in North Carolina. This is one of the divisions that I talk about all the time that touches every citizen of North Carolina 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It affects every consumer that sits down at a table and consumes meat products, so it's something that we are extremely proud of. And this division is nationally recognized for the program that it maintains on a, on a yearly basis. Behind me there's a map and it shows the 184 different plants that we inspect in North Carolina. And I think you can see they literally are from the mountains to the coast. This, this division employs 118 different people and about 85 different inspectors in the field. And, and the work that they do is not only is hard, but it is crucial to the safety of the food supply for the people of North Carolina. We inspect uh, these plants in conjunction with uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, who has many of the larger plants in North Carolina. So we have state in fact inspected plants, federally inspected plants, and then we kind of have a hybrid that is called Talmage Aiken. Today you're going to see footage of a, a plant that is probably the closest to the department in Raleigh, uh, and that's Carolina Packers in Smithfield. They pack a variety of meat products, including bacon, sausage, uh, but probably the one that they're most famous for is Brightleaf Hot Dogs. And so I think you can see from the video what our inspectors are doing, how they're involved in the process, and the importance of them being there. In fact, a slaughter facility in North Carolina cannot even operate if one of our inspectors is not on the site full time. I mentioned that we have 85 inspectors that are out in the field doing inspections for uh, the wholesome uh, products that we have on the shelf and to make sure consumers are getting a safe food supply. Uh, the inspection process is more than what it would appear on the surface. Uh, first, you know, we have to ensure under federal law that the slaughter is done humanely. Uh, that means that the animal has to remain calm, it has access to water, uh, and if it's kept overnight, it has to have access to food. So that's just the beginning of the process. But then there's the process of actually inspecting the slaughter of the meat and going through the federal rules that we operate under to make sure it is wholesome uh, and inspecting the, the movements of the animal to begin with, uh, the general health of the animal. Uh, and then after the, the process is started, if there is a question about whether this animal should be called or not, uh, our inspectors can call in one of six field veterinarians who come in and do a thorough veterinary inspection of the carcass to make sure that it is safe. So it's a complicated process, one that takes a considerable amount of training, uh, a considerable amount of time to do, but one that is so, so necessary to food safety. It's hard to believe, but our inspectors last year inspected 249 million pounds of meat across North Carolina. Uh, and this was about 385,000 animals and the, the animals range from the ones that you would think, uh, of course, our cattle, our pigs, sheep, goats, but uh, how about bison? Uh, we even inspect the, the uh, slaughter of bison for food supply, so uh, it's, it's an amazing number that I put out there, but one that we do every year. One of the programs that we have in the Meat and Poultry Inspection Division that I'm proudest of is our Meat Handlers Program. Uh, in 2002, we had one meat handler in North Carolina. When I came into office in 2005, I think there were four or five. Today, we have over 1,100 meat handlers in North Carolina in this program. And this program is designed to let especially smaller farmers, medium-sized farmers, be able to take their animals to a uh, slaughter facility that is inspected, have it labeled under their farm name, and then sell it directly to the public. So the public can uh, understand uh, when they see the label, yes, this is just like the meat that you would see in a grocery store, 
that is inspected, but the farmer himself has raised this animal, taken it to slaughter, labeled it, and now you get it fresh from the farmer. Uh, this has become so popular over the past uh, few years, it's been just absolutely amazing as people do want to know uh, how their, their uh, food products are raised, where they come from, and know that it's the freshest that they can get. So this program is absolutely amazing. Uh, we think that it has helped a lot of small farmers stay on the farm by raising these animals, and it's something that we are extremely proud of. We also have uh, poultry producers in North Carolina, I think about 200 of them that are called poultry exempt uh, producers and it's a number that they can raise and, and be able not to have to be inspected every time that they slaughter one of these animals. So those two programs combined are especially designed for small farmers and something we're very proud of. Something that has happened since we saw the pandemic is the explosive growth and the uh, need for local beef, pork, uh, basically any kind of meat that you can imagine the public was really uh, wanting to buy. Uh, and especially after the grocery shelves got to be empty because of the pandemic and, and the slaughter capacity that we have in the United States. So we went to the legislature and we asked for money to be able to expand uh, capacity to slaughter these animals in North Carolina for local sale. Uh, I'm happy to say that the legislature did a lot, $10 million, for us to be able to do this in a grant program. And uh, at the time of this taping, we have asked for an additional $10 million to, to expand the program and to include uh, seafood processing and in this uh, grant proposal. So the hope is we're going to have about $20 million available to expand processing in North Carolina and thus uh, the opportunity for small farmers to be able to sell this product directly to the public. Uh, I do believe that the, the growth, the exponential growth in demand we saw during the pandemic for local meats is going to continue even after it's over with, so we want to be prepared. Uh, the problem we have right now is a lot of our slaughter facilities are operating at a 8 to 12 month backlog, uh, which means that farmers are missing many, many opportunities to be able to sell their product directly. So this is something that uh, I'm extremely proud of and something we're going to work hard on to make it successful. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you see the impact that the Department of Agriculture has on your life. And I hope you join me again next week for another video.